It's no longer news that Nigeria generates a lot of waste, and the country indeed is challenged with how to manage this waste, whether you're recycling or reusing. The challenge of managing the waste is there. Now, across the country and across the world, we've heard that waste can be turned to wealth. We've also heard that waste can be turned to beautiful things. But is it possible to sit in your house, in one place, and make the wealth or make the beautiful things? Yes, it is. Thanks to these four students of the Government Girls College in Dutte, who have come up with an app that can link those turning the waste to these beautiful things or paying money for waste, and those generating the waste. Let's go see how they are working. Waste. Over 3 million tons are generated annually in Nigeria. It's an environmental disaster and a health hazard as only 20 to 30 percent of the waste are collected for recycling or reuse. These teenage girls from Abuja want to change that. They have built an application which they hope will make the difference in the way individuals see and manage their waste. It is called Green World Tech App. Individuals who download this app on their phone will help to make them, their lives easier and healthier because people dispose their waste on the street due to ignorance of adverse effect. That's why me and my team members created this app to help to link buyers and sellers to reduce environmental hazard and environmental pollution. And this is how the app works. A form is sent to an administrator who responds. The prospective buyer then goes on to pick up the waste or instructs the seller where to deliver the packaged waste. The app is still in the testing phase. So far, only friends and neighbors can use it. Different types of recyclable waste are rewarded with a system of credit points. Credits can be redeemed for money. I brought 30 uh, plastics. That's for plastics. And um, I got for each plastic is one point. That is uh, equivalent to, to 10 naira. So at least times 30 is about 300. It's good to go. Stella Uzochiku Dennis founded the NGO where girls can go after school to improve their maths and technical skills. Here, they also learn to program the app and create a business plan for the system. Most of the students actually have been the one who got the, the bias because they actually went online and searched within a um, Abuja environment to see who and who uses plastic as a raw material. And so they did it themselves. I didn't even help them do it. The girls who want to clean up Nigeria's waste hope to go public with their app soon. Their goal is to sign up at least 2,000 by the first quarter of 2018. <laughs> Peat lands are surprisingly very important for the ecosystem. And the peat lands in the Democratic Republic of Congo are one of the world's largest tropical peat land areas. But they are not being protected like they should be. Sharon? That's right, but now it's about to change. Thanks to the help of scientists from England, together with Greenpeace, they go on an expedition to raise the level of environmental awareness of the local population. the start of a new day in Lokalama in the Democratic Republic of Congo. <coughs> Behind the village is dense swampland. Satellite images have revealed the existence of a peat bog here in the forest. Biologists say it's one of the most important ever discovered. That's why a team of British and Congolese scientists have embarked on a joint research project. Getting to the peat bog involves an arduous, hours-long hike through the swamp. Everything is soaking wet. English geographer Simon Lewis has been surveying here for years, trying to better understand the development of the bog, which began forming tens of thousands of years ago. Made up of decomposed plant material, the peat held some surprises for the researcher. This is peat. So this is the partially decomposed plant matter. 
that uh, is a store of carbon. So this is now uh, sampled every 50 centimeters, and this is two meters to three meters deep. But what is the surprise is that we thought the peat here would be maybe 50 centimeters, maybe one meter maximum. And actually, we've got much deeper peat. So that suggests that potentially, we haven't done all the work yet, but potentially there's even more carbon stored on this side of the Congo River. The scientists now calculate that the bog is far bigger and deeper than they originally estimated. The peat layer is up to six metres thick in places and covers an area about the size of Great Britain. That's why maintaining the area is so important for the environment. As you see, there is the, surrounding the forest. So the yeah. forest is also store, uh, storing the carbon, stocking the carbon. So it's double stocking yeah. carbons above ground biomass, turning it to carbon and also the underlying deposit. And so if we wipe this forest, that's, we are double times releasing the carbon, more carbon in the atmosphere. The forests of the Congo Basin are under ever increasing pressure. Similar primeval woodlands in Asia have already disappeared and deforestation is now also a threat in this part of Africa. Illegal loggers are taking down more and more trees. Meanwhile, the government is granting licenses, some, according to environmental groups, under dubious circumstances. But as local populations grow, so does the need for arable land. To plant cassava, for instance. Farmers like Valentin Agobo say they have no choice. To acquire new fields, they say, they have to drain at least some of the moors. We have to maintain a balance between preserving nature and survival. Yes, we need alternatives to deforestation, but it's not that easy. There are no projects in place to help people pursue other livelihoods. That's why the environmental organization Greenpeace has stepped in to support the scientists financially and logistically and to teach the villagers more about why environmental protection is vital. A government official explains the difficulties the country is facing. We would have to provide aid to the people here so they don't take resources from the forest. But such projects cost money, money the government doesn't have. That's why we need the financial support of the international community. The activists say it's imperative to develop a strategy that provides financial support for the entire region. Otherwise, the Congolese authorities will continue to permit logging, which will eventually lead to the release of vast amounts of sequestered CO2. We need to find international solutions, not only to help these countries protect these primeval forests, but also to further study the peat bogs in order to protect them, because they contain huge amounts of carbon. There are some 30 billion tons of carbon trapped in there. That's the equivalent of three years of total global emissions from coal, oil and gas combined. The scientists have finished for the day, but it'll take months to record and analyze all the data they've collected, providing more insights into one of the largest carbon reservoirs on the planet.